So the next axiom on our list is the axiom of foundation. Foundation. And intuitively what the axiom of foundation says is that all sets start from somewhere. All sets um, start from somewhere. So formally, what does it say? Well, it says if we take any set S, if this set is non-empty, so if it's not equal to the empty set, well, there has to be some element in S. So there's some X, some, some X in S, so that for every single Y in S, uh, Y is not an element of X. So that's formally what um, it's saying. And to be honest, when I saw this for the first time, I thought it was really weird. Um, but the way in which it's used, the way that this kind of foundation axiom is going to be used is, well, what if we want to show that a property is true for every single set? Um, the axiom of foundation allows us to do something called uh, well-founded induction on sets. So if we want to show that a property is true for every single set, sometimes it might be useful to do this type of induction argument. And the axiom of foundation is going to kind of be the tool that lets us do this. Um, in, in a certain way, uh, in a certain sense, it's kind of an axiom out of convenience, where if it wasn't true, or if we didn't assume it, or didn't add into our ZFC axioms, we could always restrict our attention to um, all of the sets that satisfy this this kind of property here. Um, so in some sense, it doesn't, it's not the most crucial thing in the entire world, but it kind of allows us to state that certain uh, things might be true for every single set. Uh, one consequence of this, for example, and it's also why uh, I, uh, what I mean when I say that all sets start from somewhere, we don't have uh, kind of more pathological sets that, that might exist something like this. So uh, here's an example. Um, there is no set Z. Um, such that Z is the set containing itself. So Z is a set, and one question you can ask is, well, is there a set whose only element is itself? And the foundation axiom implies that there is no such set like this. So what's kind of the proof of this set? Or what's the proof of this? So proof? Well, if there were, then well, we could uh, then we could apply foundation to the set Z, right? Uh, then by foundation, by foundation, what has to happen? Well, Z is not empty. Why? Well, because it contains itself as an element, so it's not empty. Uh, so by foundation, uh, there must. Uh, so by foundation, there exists an x in Z, so that for every y in Z, um, y is not an element of x. That's just exactly what the conclusion of foundation tells us. Well, what has to happen? Uh, it must be that if there's a, an x in z so that something happens, the only element of z is itself, right? So uh, uh, since, uh, since there's an x in z, uh, we must have we must have that um, x is equal to z. And where does the contradiction, where do we get this contradiction? Well, we, have, we can pick any y uh, for which this kind of final uh, statement has to be true. Well, if y is equal to z, so if y is equal to z, then what must happen is we must happen, uh, it, it must follow uh, that, uh, that z is not an element of itself. Uh, but that's a contradiction. That's a contradiction because um, uh, well, Z by assumption is an element of itself. Uh, it, it, so, so by definition, Z is an element of itself. 
other kind of types of pathological sets that uh, that 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 don't exist from the foundation axiom, and it's kind of a good uh, exercise or something that's uh, nice to think about. Is uh, another example might be something like there is no. Uh, whoops, I wrote is twice. There is no um, uh, set. Y that's equal to the set containing X, and uh, X is the set containing Y. So we don't have anything kind of crazy like that. Or if we were to kind of combine everything together, we don't get that Y is equal to the set containing the set containing Y. We don't have anything like this. Um, other types of kind of pathological types of kind of sets or sequences that don't exist is that we don't have an infinite descending, one of the consequences of this, is uh is actually equivalent to to uh this statement here is that we're not going to have this kind of infinite descending epsilon chain so what do i mean by that we're not going to have a set x1 that has an element uh, uh x2 uh, but this x2 has an element x3 but this x3 has an element x4 and so on so these types of change uh, these types of chains don't exist so these don't exist uh that does not exist. 